belongs to the AA. For great value car, home and travel insurance, go to the AA.ie. Rain continuing over much of the north and east with a risk of some localised flooding. Dry across Munster with scattered showers, lows of 8 to 11 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Hello there. Well, the world of sport absolutely flying on several fronts. Ireland look to regroup after World Cup humiliation. Not much talk of a semi final now. We'll talk to Andy Dunn and Rory O'Connor after 8 o'clock. John Delaney, meanwhile, has walked away from the FAI with several hundred thousand euro. Not that the newly revamped FAI would reveal any details or comment any further. That said, if we could return our taxpayers' money to them now, it would be much appreciated. Dan McDonald in studio. Manchester United against Arsenal 2019 only reminds us of a better time long ago when we were all younger. And the World Championships continue in Doha, where the men's 100 metres was won by Christian Coleman, who's missed one drugs test and two whereabouts forms in the past 12 months. The now sixth fastest man in history held off Justin Gatlin. Gatlin himself, the fastest 37-year-old in history, owner of two drugs bans, and all of this happened in front of about 18 people watching from the stands. Meanwhile, marathon runners outside were fainting left, right and centre. And here in Ireland, it's lashing rain, which means Dan McDonald is late because traffic comes to a complete standstill. Text numbers 53106 were at off the ball on Twitter, but frankly, Richie McCormick, why bother? As openings go, Joe, that certainly was one. Um, I'm done. I'm done. It's depressing. I'm done. I'm out. I'm done. Come back tomorrow at 7. I didn't realise the weather was actually like the fourth or fifth most depressing <laughs> thing about the day. But you've just reminded me that there are other areas of crapness that we can focus our lives take, upon. Take your pick. Do you want to re-pick through it? One. Ireland World Cup humili- humiliation was mentioned. Uh, uh, John Delaney's walked away with several hundred thousand euro. We don't know exactly how much. But it's the newly reformed FAI. They still release statements at the death of night on Saturdays. But it's newly reformed. Newly that- reformed FAI, which is... Mostly the old FAI negotiating with the outgoing part of the FAI about how they'll go and go quietly. Manchester United against Arsenal in 2019. I mean, honestly. No, who cares? There's no point in this match. And the World Championships, the final nail in the coffin, dealt by Athletics' own governing body. There are currently 18 people in the stands watching the Athletics continue. It's busier today. There are still marathon runners outside being found in ditches (laughs) and along the road. Which is to say that they allow ditches in Doha, which is probably not true. So there we are, Richie. There we are. A cheery beginning. And uh, it's lashing rain, and the weather is showing no signs of abating. I had to buy a new hoodie. Lorenzo was on the way. Lorenzo. I had to buy a new hoodie. My Mm -hmm. socks are still damp. Yeah. And I put my hat in the microwave to dry it. Well, thanks be for small mercies. The days of flares, at least, not with us, (gasps) Richie. In this weather. There are people out there who still are flapping around in boot cuts that are probably frayed around the back and flapping against their heel, making that little squelch sound as they walk. That's disgusting not and that, disgraceful. Not that I, I'm young enough to even uh, attempt to be fashionable, but no matter how... <laughs> Joe! No matter how much they come back, if I'm the last man standing who's not wearing boot cuts in this country, I ain't going back. Not in this weather, not in this climate, never. <clears throat> Can I shock you? Go on. I used to wear those massive flares. Now, why, that, why, that wouldn't shock me. We didn't know any better. Plus, I think there was less choice back then. There wasn't. There was, like, choice, but I think for some reason, like skinny and straight leg stuff was like frowned upon uh, especially when you were you know 18, 20 and around the year 2000, 2001 um, whereas I just went for those massive pop flares that were about 28 inches wide they were disgraceful they were I have no idea how it got around a stiff breeze would slow you down significantly they and in this country they're plentiful Joe they weren't aerodynamic so let's get on with the show Dan is going to arrive presently we're told it, this, the city really does come to a standstill when it rains it's ridiculous why is that? Is that because more people drive or do people just drive yeah, more, people more slowly? Are, more people are driving and then people are driving slowly. Although people should be driving slowly. I could actually give out about the way people drive on the motorway. Um, but I'm talking about the inner city. But even, yeah, but even still, people yeah, drive stupidly. People, yeah. drive, people drive cautiously in town. That's what It slows down anyway. Yeah. So uh, let's there kick on. Look at him. A good man, Dammington. He's so good, though. Well, that's one thing. There's one upside now to the intro that's See, we, one thing we've mm-hmm. began the upswing tonight Joe <laughs> we, we hit rock bottom at 6.59 I'm not <laughs> going to say it's Ivan's fault but uh-huh. there we go and we're going to take it up from here ok so Dan McDonald is here let's um, kick off the news round all the same because we are busy so we'll talk to Dan in detail about John Delaney come half past seven he wrote a brilliant piece remembering the good old days over the weekend 
and then after 8 o'clock we'll talk rugby. You are starting with the pressure now on the FEI? Yeah, there is growing pressure on the FEI to reveal the level of payout made to its now former CEO John Delaney. It's thought Delaney's walked away with 350000 That differs depending on who you read today. Uh, Mr Delaney's departure was announced late on Saturday night, as you mentioned, with a number of TDs today saying there needs to be clarity on the deal reached. His exit comes just a week ahead of the expected results of a forensic audit of the association. Chair of the Oireachta Sports Committee, Fergus O'Dowd, told News Talk today that John Delaney's resignation does not resolve the issues of FAI governance. I don't think it's enough at all. I think that when we've got the full detail of the forensic, and that's the forensic audit which I look for, which the taxpayer is paying for uh, through Sports Ireland, I think the detail of that, when we have the detail of that, we will know what needs to change. And until then, we don't. But I've no doubt that would be a matter of huge debate when it's published and our committee, our Rockless Dog Committee, is ready, willing and able to interrogate, uh, you know, the correct, you know, form of the future form that the FAI takes and what changes need to take place as a result of this audit. Uh, perfect timing, Dan McDonald. You have joined us now. Hello. I have, lads. Sorry about this. It's going to be like one of those weird continuity errors you see in movies. It's like, Tom wasn't there a minute ago. Where did yeah, you come from? Can we just try and re- yeah, record it in a weird way? Yeah, it's a bit, bit mad out there with the old weather. I'm sure there's a lot of people listening in the car who can uh, endorse that point. Do you know, in the rain, things just happen around 10 times slower and people just get very, way more impatient and then... Just yeah. asking, why is it so much slower? Is it, is it volume? Is it more cars when it rains? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, well, it's, it. yeah it's probably that. Yeah, a lot of people would have driven said it wouldn't. And then also, uh, things just happen a bit slower in terms of like two lanes around the city and people are paranoid about crashing into someone. Uh, and, yeah, uh, it's a bit it's of rain just, though. I know, but it's just, it just reduces us to a... Other cities function in snow. Still. I know, oh yeah, listen, this is, this is, this is the... And, and there's always sort of random roadworks popping up where you don't want it as well. Oh, there sure are. Mm. You missed what I think was the most downbeat intro to the show I've ever done. Why? You did it in an upbeat manner though, though. that must be sad. Why mm. was it downbeat? Well, I mean, where do you want me to start? Do you want to go, do you, do you want to get a, get a little taster again? Oh, oh no, no, I'd like the, the weekend of misery and all this. And well, it continues on several fronts. Stop. You got to mention. Oh? Yeah, your lateness got to mention. Oh, no. <laughs> Is it that bad? Ireland rugby got a start. World Cup humiliation. We kicked off at World Cup humiliation. Yeah. Andy Dunn and Rory O'Connor after 8 o'clock on the way. But a cheer. John Delaney has walked away from the FAI with several hundred thousand euro. That got a mention. Mm. The and fact now, he's gone could and be now, well, 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 no, Really, could no, it, Dan? Give me, give me some more misery. Give me some more misery. Given the six million basic he earned over the years. Oh, no, no. I know, I know Are we, that. This is a good day, is it? Uh, thanks for that. No, no, I, yeah, it's not great, but I'm just saying. And the, the, the newly revamped FAI that I was trying to think, maybe they are trying to do things right, released a statement in the dead of night and Saturday. It was like, that thing against... Uh, the Gibraltar Executive Vice President press release worked so well. Let's do that again. Mm. That was a masterstroke, they said. So right away, I don't trust their judgment on anything else going forward right now. Uh, so that was mentioned. And I presume it's time to give the taxpayers money back to them. That was part of it. Manchester United against Arsenal in 2019, Dan. Not the game it was. You said it. And then the World Championships in Doha got a mention as well. Oh, not, not the most cheerful. They're basically paying people to go off the streets to just... There's more people up. in this studio of their own free will than there is in the Doha Stadium. Yeah, yeah. The 100 metres won by Christian Coleman. He's missed one drugs test, two whereabouts forms messed up. Yeah. Got off in a technicality this year. I heard that yesterday, all right. Not yeah. exactly the bright new hope. I mean, he, he did fend off Justin Gatlin, the fastest 37-year-old in history with two doping bands behind him. And there were 18 people in the stadium to watch it as marathon runners outside fainted. <laughs> and then I said, and here in Ireland, Dan McDonald's late because it's lashing rain. Text number 53106. <laughs> we're at Off The Ball on Twitter. You're all caught up. <sighs> That's where we were. That's where we were, okay. Well, I mean, do you want me to add some cheer or just like get a bit more... Your presence so, alone has offered cheer, Dan. Sort of down. Now, Manchester United Arsenal, 2019, Richie. <laughs> so you've got, um, you've got team news. This is at Old Trafford at 8 o'clock. Yeah, two title rivals of yesteryear meeting in the Premier League tonight. Manchester United line out with David De Gea in goal. Axel Twanzebe, Harry Maguire, Victor Lindelof and Ashley Young as their back four. In midfield, it's Scott McTominay, Paul Pogba and Andres Pereira with Jesse Lingard and Daniel James supporting the surprisingly fit Marcus Rashford. For Arsenal, Bert Leno starts in goal. For them, it's a back four of Callum Chambers, Socrates Papastatopoulos, David Luiz and Seah Glasnach. In midfield, it's Matteo Guendouzi, Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira and either side of Buyako Saka it's Nicolas Pepe and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang Saka doing uh, wonders for Arsenal in the Cups so far this term and kickoff, as you say is at 8 o'clock Pat Nevin's going to join us in the football show so he'll watch a good chunk of this match before he's with us after 9 o'clock the most startling it's not surprising I suppose given we've watched the last 20 games but when you see it written down it is amazing 
in Manchester United's last 20 games under Solskjaer, on 17 occasions, they haven't scored more than one goal. Mm. The great entertainers. <laughs> They're the most boring team in the league now. Yeah, I mean, no, it's 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 not a game that I have to admit. Like, you know, I've been looking forward to today in that sort of sense. I mean, I know obviously there's been a general FAI thing going on anyway, but yeah, you think of the Manchester United Arsenal games, they'd be ones you'd be sort of circling. You're looking at it today, going, yeah, well, there's two teams later on who might finish fourth. You know, it's, a rem- it's just, just a stark reminder of how badly both of them have fallen off is, in the last yeah. five Wouldn't years. Wouldn't even be interested if they threw pizza at each other afterwards. No, you know, your footnote. We give out about the wasted pizza. To be fair, you'd just be like, yeah, this should be. So the weather in Japan screwed up the Irish rugby team, and now it's sabotaging off the ball. Dan McDonnell, damn you, weather gods, says Mark. Doesn't Dan realise he should have allowed an extra four hours travel time when it's raining? I, probably, I mean, that would end badly. Did the weather sabotage the Irish rugby team? Is that the story now? We're clinging to that. Diplomatic right, humility. Okay. <laughs> when we get to the final, Dan, winter time will have really set in. It'll suit us even more. Oh, they've had four years to prepare for that, though, haven't they? Yeah. Never mind your four hours. When your boot cuts got so wrecked and scabby looking that you had to oh. cut around four inches off with the scissors. There you go. Oh. Bizarrely, that was some sort of badge of honour. Amazing what passes for fashion at times, says Colin. I don't think anybody could ever have claimed at the time even that it passed for fashion. G- genuinely, I don't think I particularly liked them at the time, but I never, ever could have imagined wearing... I've never worn skinny fit, but slim fit. I never thought that was going to come back. I can never see you in skinny fit jeans. Oh, I mean... I kind of want it. You never will. <laughs> I'm you're in... Good slacks, man, Joe. That's you strike me as. So you're reminiscing about the old sort of flare, the old... No, no, the, the, no, bottom, the bottom damn, of the jeans. The sound. You cut them off. Think of the sound. Yeah. yeah. You, Richie was cut looking for off. one bright note in my intro. We're not wearing and flares anymore. all I came up with was, we're not wearing boot cuts or flares in this weather. That was it. That's about it. That was all I had at the moment. I'm in Muscat. Capital of Muscat. Familiar with Muscat? Is that Oman? Okay, JP, you've screwed me there, mate. <laughs> Richie put in. Uh, <laughs> but I'm in Muscat to the text to which JP put in brackets. Capital of Muscat. Capital <laughs> of Oman. Let me down there, pal. This night's gone from bad to worse. Yes. Ew. <laughs> I'm in Muscat, capital of Oman. You know, in, in Irish football, we know our Oman related trivia. Fair enough. Listening to Off the Ball, it's 10 pm and 37 degrees. How could you run a marathon in this part of the world, says John? Well, I suppose they didn't start the marathon until midnight, so there's another two hours for it to cool off. And, mo- and but more the to good the point, news, 41% of them didn't. Mm. Is that 41% didn't it was, finish? Yeah, was, I think the odds the actual figure, 41%. <laughs> the right. good news is, uh, I heard you talking about yes, the good news is that the air-conditioned stadiums do seem to be working. In the stadiums. So at least you know the World Cup is going to be played in a perfectly neutral, yeah. manufactured environment, which would mean that no team can cite the weather as an excuse but for anything that's happened. Because they can't train in it. Because even the athletes were talking about this oh. over in Doha. They go from like the outside areas to the warm-up track to the actual track, which are three completely different climates. So there's no That's way to point. properly acclimatise uh, the sort of Xavi climate. will have it sorted. He'll, he'll sort out some things air conditioned Things are better in Qatar than they are in Spain. Uh, some sort of air-conditioned so. training device there, you mm. know, ready for everyone. I'm sure technology would have moved on by then, Richie. We'll have it sorted. It's Qatar. A, that is a good point, everything. Though, about the stadiums versus training grounds. But I assume the training grounds will have some element of uh, air conditioning. There's no way. Like, yeah, each For a FIFA World Cup, every team needs this designated training base of which, you know, Robbie Keane just standing with them. an oscillating fan at the side of the pitch. Well, it depends. Some, some associations are going to be better <laughs> set than others. I mean, maybe it's like Germany and the teams that qualify already will have one booked and then you get into the tournament at the last minute and realise, oh no, you know, you need some last minute frantic solution. But I, I sort of doubt it. I, I, the guitar basically just going to uh, bribe us all to make it sort of, make us all like it. How much? To some degree. Well, this is the degree, you know. Individually? Well, I mean, would you do a gig in Qatar? I'd say you would. You think about it, You'd agonise over it, but I mean, you know, present a gig in guitar for six weeks. You, Keezy, and uh, Andy Gray. Andy Gray, on yeah. being sports for the yeah, duration of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd write a book about it too. Guitar's <laughs> got talent or whatever. You I mean you do it all? You know, you you would definitely do guitar. It again. I am, but like, <laughs> but like every everyone that goes over there seems to like. There's a lot of pundits who spend a lot of time there. I think that was Jason McIntyre speaking about it before. Like a lot of people have gone there. They just they really get into it. You know, they sort of they see the good side of it and they're thinking, yeah, people there are trying. They're really nice. They're making an effort. Javi. That will happen. Javi's a big fan of it. Massive fan. But they're in they're these walled off areas. Like their life is completely different to the day to day. Completely. It's like going to like the World Cup in 2010. Like you go to Johannesburg and spend a lot of time in Santon and think that, well, I mean, Johannesburg is pretty nice, you know? It's like, well, no, Santon is just, you know, and this is a very different type of dynamic in Qatar, I guess, but it's, it's not a million miles away in terms of the illusionary yes, uh, yeah, sure. lifestyle that will come with it. But people will probably, people will buy into it at the time. 
Uh, will. I, I will. Papered to high heaven, by the way. The thing that will be learned from this week and what's going on in Doha is that this World Cup in 2022, FIFA will make sure there ain't an empty seat every 18 mm. inches. That's yeah. just not no, going to happen. That's true. It'll be a thank you to all the workers that they got to go and actually watch some games at the end of it. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, that's the thing, isn't Please it? Please enjoy Tunisia and Saudi Arabia, lads. Mm. Jesus, Joe, with all this cheer so far, I feel like turning around and going back to work. Bobby and Castle Connell. Don't do it, bad, the traffic's Bobby. really bad. So whatever you do. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get it back, Bobby. It was a six hour journey. Lads, can we celebrate Brendan Boyce's phenomenal superhuman achievement and performance in the 50k race walk? The most, sixth, yeah. the most grueling athletic event in horrendous conditions. A loyal Donegal listener. Yes, he yeah, moonwalked over the line. He finished sixth. the only event where I've ever seen people actually soiling themselves in the middle of it. It's, it's gruesome. That's what they're doing in Rio. Italia 90. Well, there is that, yeah. Aside from that. Poor Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading somewhere, an interview with Gary, I think it was Malik Clerken recently, and he was saying he was just so grateful that it was a wet evening so that he was able to clean himself on the pitch. Yeah, he wiped his arse like a dog. Yeah, but if it hadn't been wet, he was in all sorts of trouble. And they had dark shorts on as well. <laughs> yeah, he, he said that too. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, even though I was very unlucky, it happened. A lot of circumstances really worked out for me. Shame that it's still a talking point to go <laughs> 29 years on, well, but there you go. If, whatever he tweets, like literally, you know, match of the days on tonight at half past ten, right up to, you know, his political views. Yeah. Shit's it, on Lineker. There will be, uh, like, dozens of replies saying you shot yourself. Yeah. You just kind of, oh, that, that, that is his thing forever. Like, that, that is his thing. <laughs> you do, uh, that's not being your thing. You're like England's third all-time record goal scorer. It's not his thing, though. You've played for Barcelona, Spurs and Everton. You've won the FA Cup. You've like, what did you do? I shot myself in a World Cup. But if I, I think he's got a few other things going does. from, if, to be if fair. I said to but you, he's still going to have Walker's crisps and the Italian 90 uh, thing. Like, yeah. that's, that's going to come up. I'm not sure. If I said to you, uh, Gary Lineker, give me five words, five first words that come to your mind. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, match of the day would... Uh, Mexico World Cup 86, Sorry, actually. It's up there now. Mexico <laughs> World Cup 86. It's but obviously going to be If in your you're head. saying five, well, it's, like, it's obviously going to be five in your head now. Five five things. If you've got five things, then all of a sudden you're getting into a bit of, you know. Yeah. Okay, five things. It might, be the, it might be the top five. Okay. This is now not it's a perfect it. scientific experiment because I've just planted it. So uh, not only, I'll come back to you in, in six months. You'll be on air, and randomly I'm just Gary Lineker. Go, Gary Lineker, five <laughs> things. Shot himself. <laughs> you say shot himself. <laughs> Fair enough. Skinny jeans are a travesty. <laughs> Especially with no socks, says Tom. Uh, people who don't wear socks are freaks. No, they all are wearing socks. It's just that they're below the shoe. No, there are people who don't wear socks. Uh, very few, I think. Genuinely, it's just too disgusting. The sweat, horrible. Um, what to be saying like here, yeah, really? You know, just that's it, what, that, what are they up to these days? I saw. I was looking at someone in skinny jeans the other socks. day in a coffee shop, and I was like, "Is he not wearing socks?" And then I looked, and he does have like the socks people wear on holidays. It's obviously been a boom for those oh, little holidays. That yeah, sock that's industry. what they're all wearing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, says Tom, skinny jeans are a travesty, especially with no socks. Although I think, I was just coming in to say, I think most are wearing socks. The holiday skinny, the small socks. He reckons boot cut jeans are fine. Is he wearing them with like, you know, black slip on shoes as well? Boot cut jeans are fine. I'm not sure if they are. Shoe. He says, I'll accept flares are a no no. Yeah. It's 2019, people. We've got to grow up. I did a marathon in Cambodia last month. Oh, Jesus, his texture. Same weather, five hours of hell. I'd well believe it. I mean, we must. Um, Warm There'd country. be nothing left of you. So warm there. country, nothing left. Yeah. So uh, let's um, push on. Then we've given you Manchester United team <laughs> news. What else is going on? Scotland coach Gregor Townsend insists Ireland and Japan are still favourites to qualify from Pool A of the Rugby World Cup. The Scots picked up their first win of the pool today with a 34-0 bonus point victory over Samoa and Kobe. Townsend says they need things to go their way over their next two games if they're to overtake the top two in Pool A. Well, we're still in the tournament. So that's what the, the win means tonight. And the bonus point gives us an opportunity to, to go to our next game and aim to get maximum points in that game. And if we do, it will be a game against Japan to go into the quarterfinals. Japan have a good rest into the game against Samoa. Samoa have a quick turnaround. And we have an even quicker turnaround against Japan when we play them in a couple of weeks' time. So we're going to look at the next 10, 11 days as preparation for both Russia and Japan. I've got to say, I'm really looking forward to Japan against Scotland now. It's going to be a brilliant game. 
especially if Scotland line, yeah. turn up and try to play the way they like to think they play and Japan do their thing, it could be um, a cracker. Meanwhile, on the humidity front, CJ Stander was out today talking about this. He was, yeah. Conditions were actually sweltering under that dome in Kobe today and Ireland play Russia there on Thursday as they look to recover from that disappointing loss to Japan. CJ Stander, as you mentioned in front of the media today, and not blaming the humidity for Saturday's defeat. It was, it was hot that day, but I think in the first 10 minutes, you just forget about it, you know, and just keep on. You have a job to do, and adrenaline takes it away. Um, probably small things just like sweat, how to manage that, to have, have, get it off your hands and stuff like that. But it wasn't that bad on the weekend. It was a bit more in the Scotland game. So, um, yeah, I can't talk for the rest of the tournament. So, uh, we've, I think we prepared well for it um, in our pre-season. And um, I think everyone looked well, what we need to do and how we can how we can best prepare for the humidity, but it's not really a factor. Um, it's something that is probably in the back of a uh, few people's minds, but it's not a big factor for me anyway. Okay, so you're saying that's not too big a factor. They did look absolutely wiped. Not to make an excuse, uh, and it's not an excuse, uh, certainly not a good enough one to lose to a tier two nation, given the achievements over the last uh, couple of years, massive underperformance, but they did look wiped, even at halftime coming off. Did you watch the game, Dan? Um, I watched the last 10 minutes of it, yeah, I sort of... Uh, I Are you sort of, an anti-rugby type? Did you tune in when you got word things weren't going well? I, I, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of my best friends are, no, rugby, I'm asking are rugby people. I'm asking you. I got a lot of messages from people, <laughs> rugby people. <laughs> That's my defense. <laughs> so, so, are you? I, 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 WhatsApp, my WhatsApp group started pinging with people, and I was like, oh, the lad's on about the rugby again, like, you know, they're going to analyze the game like they did last week, sort of in 300 messages. I was like, oh, Japan might nick this. I was like, oh, all of a sudden this might be interesting. Because I bought into the whole thing that they won the first game, then nothing else happens till October the 20th, which just sounds like the longest holiday of all time. And then you're like, well, actually, this game might be actually interesting. And then I went down and I turned it on. I watched this. I'm uh, asking you, I'm asking you, Yeah. did you turn on because you realised they were losing and you wanted to see that? <sighs> just answer the question. It added to my interest in proceedings, but I don't think oh. it's like... I, 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 oh! That's it's interesting. Natural, natural. What, what, is, it it natural? People, people. <laughs> what is it about the rugby team that irks <laughs> you? No, seriously, it's been an interesting discussion. What, I just, I'm, I'm indifferent to it. I must admit. If you were indifferent I'm, to it, you I'm wouldn't. No, but it I'm, on. no, no. But I'm sort of indifferent to the team. Yeah, I can't. I, can't, I find it very hard to explain. I find it very hard to articulate because I actually, you almost feel a sense of guilt about it. No, it's but funny. it's actually sort of a natural feeling. Is that it the private school thing? Uh, I'm not so not so sure about that. Um, I, I didn't I didn't grow up in Dublin, so I didn't, wasn't around people from schools. Like you know, was, you know what I mean? I don't know. It's 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 actually very hard one to articulate. It's just a sort of a feeling that. I've never felt that invested in their fortunes. Whereas, like as a kid, I remember through the '90s when they were sort of in the the Five Nations days, sitting watching games and being really into it and rooting them, rooting for it. When did and they then, start to lose you? I don't know. I don't know. I, th I wonder is it, is there an element of the uh, you know over over the past decade or so, maybe how the the the, the the shaping of the rugby personalities in comparison to the football team and some some stuff you know not not too recently or not not in the too too long in the past about um, you know I don't know how how they can how they carry themselves and comport themselves in a situation that is you know very different to the football team. We think, oh, really, yeah. you know. Um, so I always felt there was an element of a of a double standard there, but like. At the same time, it's not as if I have any issue with actual anyone that's on the team at the moment or anything like that. It's just an actual feeling. And there's a lot of people who feel that way. Yeah. And, like, I mean, a lot of people who feel that way. I think it's, um, they do exist. It's not just, like, I know that, like, some people have got actively involved in it in social media and it's deemed as, like, a wind up margin, but it does reflect an opinion that's out there. I do think it's quite interesting mm -hmm. that, like, there's people who, for whatever reason, haven't appreciated, um, it, they don't feel I don't know they don't have that connection with the team whatever yeah. but it's but it's put out there that this is the team of us and this is the uh, you know this is rugby country and I think that that probably does uh, wind people up a bit so at the, times. Mar the marketing might irk you in places yeah I think so yeah like uh, well it is a marketed side in yeah in a way that, that this, the football team isn't it was kind of it ended up being so in the late is there any 90s but I think in a rather haphazard and clumsy kind yeah. of way this is a very staged managed unit and has been for the past few years, and whether that turns people on or off, I don't know. Mm. But th th I don't think there's any denying that. Like they are marketed it as an entity in a way that the soccer team isn't, hockey teams aren't, GA teams aren't on mass. This is like 
a thing mm. that you were supposed to glom onto, mm. and whether you do or you don't, kind of I don't know if it reflects your enjoyment of the World Cup or not. Yeah, I, I, it, it's a tough one to analyze. I think you need to do a study of. It. I mean, I did say that someone over the weekend, or like, I, I think I'd like to actually a, a feature or something to look into why a lot of people every time that they have a big defeat, there is like an undertone of like. Lead. It does, it's not similar. It's not that far below beneath the surface. Well, and, and it's not like I know that there's a social media echo chamber big time as well. And like you, you could be in a world where you might know a lot of people that feel the same way. So you see a lot of it, and it's completely overstated. And as I said, like there, I think it would probably there would be a different sense if they were going up against the under, if they were in some kind of underdog scenario. Mm. But I, I guess it, it, it there wasn't a sense that it totally would have ruined the weekend that they that they yeah. lost to Japan. Like I mean, the whole tier two aspect of, of rugby and stuff as well the fact that these teams don't actually play proper games only once every four years mm. um, it feeds into a certain elitist look of the top nations and oh there is a I mean, massive elitist when we were on the other side of that with cricket we were like raging against this whole thing and yeah. what about we want status and we want to be in the World Cup and all this but actually you flip around the other side when we're in the other position Funny, here actually, on that point Stephen Jones in the Sunday Times I don't know how true this is or not but said the Irish uh, Union would be regarded as incredibly conservative on that front yeah oh, the, the uh, Royal Legion tackled that here yesterday I think he might have actually fun as well rugby, rugby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he'd be actually one of the ones that would be just, if George are clamouring for inclusion in the Six Nations or promotion and relegation or being sought in Six Nations Ireland to the best of my knowledge in RFU would be one of the ones to be like yeah now you're alright yeah and I don't like that it's part of the, it's part of the sport that I don't especially like we, we, you know what we should tease it out so we might have a, have a chat I guess you and your friends at the weekend were too busy sending like laughing crying faced emojis to each other to actually chat not about all the team. friends I just thought I mean, there, was, there, was, there was people grieving that I know so like that's not that's not an accurate reflection of like uh, of, a, of a peer group but it does it does exist no, but th- thanks for putting me on the spot all, all the same Joe I really hey, appreciate listen. that it's no problem, Dan. That's really, that's really good of you. <laughs> <laughs> you come in late, this is what you get. You're yeah, encouraging yeah. me to try and like, you know, give a, give a diplomatic answer. Yeah, you're being honest. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. You don't have to support every team. No, you don't. Like 10 minutes from the end, I was half thinking, it's hard not to like this Japan team. They're brilliant. Oh, really? Yeah? yeah. So were you happy then, at the end? In a sense, it, uh, Ireland are going to make a quarterfinal either way. I would think, mm. and so I kind of maybe that's part of it as well. Japan over Scotland, yeah. There's no I definitely, sense of I definitely dis- want Japan to no get sense of Scotland. Di- there's no sense of disaster. Yeah, after. If, it was, if it was a quarter final and Japan were playing Ireland, it might have been very different. Like there would mean the, the fans that own she and speaking to after games don't appear to. <laughs> it doesn't look like their days are going to be ruined by the outcome of the match. They are getting on with their lives. Yeah, I don't like. Joe, cheer yourself up a little by remembering on this day seven years ago. The miracle in Medina happened. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Good oh, yeah. That is now. That's a, that's a oh, big number. Yeah. Just that was pretty good, though, to be fair. Let's actually cancel the rest of the show and do a miracle in Medina. JP, get in here. Let's talk it through. You get Polter up. Just when you're castigating Tweet him for ten, elitism, ten, ten you're moving on, on to like wider <laughs> cup golf. 10-6 on the Saturday. Jesus. Pick let's your move, battles there, Jeff. Yeah, let's move on to Europe's glorious win. I ran the 2014 marathon... Come on, Team Blue! <laughs> <laughs> We're, we all bleed blue and yellow. Mm. I ran the uh, 2014 marathon de Sable in the Sahara. Jesus. That is... People are mental. I actually think we should get this listener on to tell you. I mean, we, if they want to come on sometime and tell us about it, we so could do this, it. listener. I uh, ran the 2014 Marathon de Sable in the Sahara. Day one was, he says, quote, an easy 33 kilometres across two sets of dunes with a 10 kg pack on. It was 47 degrees. What compels these people to do this? A sense of achievement. It's a pretty good story. Adrenaline. To tell. You get a text into a radio show and have us all like The that. sense of achievement. I have a like, sense of achievement if I make it through a bus journey with my headphones not with me. So you ran the 2014 Marathon du Sable Sahara. Day one <clears> was <throat> the easy day. 33k across two sets of dunes and they make you carry a 10kg pack in 47 degrees heat. I'd I love think, to know the training think, for that. We could get that listener on, I think. The training. What is the training process for that? Like, how do you acclimatise for that? I don't know. I don't know. That's a hell of a job. So um, we're right out of time. We've got to talk John Delaney after the ad break. <laughs> Rich, do you want to bring us through anything must <coughs> must do here? Hey, let's finish on a down beat, shall we? Yes. Richard Kill may have already played his final game for Derby County. The Republic of Ireland defender likely to be out until December of 2020 after suffering a serious knee injury in a car accident last week. Kyo damaged his anterior cruciate ligament and his medial collateral ligament in the collision, which has seen teammates Mason Bennett and Tom Lawrence charged with drink driving. The 33-year-old only has 18 months remaining on his contract and could be out for 15 of those. I mean, look, he did something very silly, obviously. <coughs> He's paying a hell of a price. He really is. We'll talk about it more yeah. in the football show. Uh, that concludes the most uplifting news round I hope we'll ever be part of. That was, that was cheerful stuff. Yeah. 
two and a half hours after the show tonight, Dan. And we're going to talk about John Delaney next. Off the ball on News Talk. Molly, the Museum of Literature Ireland is a new home for the world's greatest storytellers. Discover Ireland's 